All right, in this video, I'm going to use the um, SPSS general linear model repeated measures um, to analyze um, uh, repeated measures analysis of variance. So let's just say we have 20 participants who took part in three conditions. So it's a within subject manipulation. The participants take part in each condition where they're given a set of words or, th or three sets of words and given uh, different instructions for how to uh, memorize them and then their recall. The dependent variable here is the number of words that were recalled. So we have um, shallow depth of processing, medium depth of processing, and deep depth of processing. So you notice in SPSS, if you want to use SPSS uh, GLM repeated measures, you need to set up your independent variable or variables in a wide format so that each column represents a level or even a cell if we have more than um, more than two independent variables a level or a cell in your um, uh, ANOVA design so here we have okay participant one recalled three words in the shallow condition recalled four words in the medium condition rec recalled five words in the deep condition right so each participant um, has a column for each level of that within subjects or repeated measures factor. Right? So okay, let's go ahead and go to analyze general linear model uh, repeated measures. So we're gonna we're gonna test the null hypothesis that the means in these three conditions are the same. And we want to see if we can reject that null hypothesis and say how the means might be different. So we go to repeated measures and we can give the within subjects factor a name processing depth. Um, it has three levels and now we need to define those three levels so we'll put shallow might as well keep them in this order medium and deep and so we'll want some some additional output besides the hypothesis test we should probably ask for our descriptive statistics the means and the effect size estimates um, for this sample, we click continue. Um, we could ask for a specific contrast, and some of them make might make a lot of sense, um, particularly because we have um, an independent variable that that um, presumably increases in um, increases in the amount of depth of processing that's recalled. So we we might want to do some kind of special contrast to to compare one like medium to shallow and deep to medium uh, but I'll leave it at the default which is the polynomial because actually the first contrast in the polynomial will test to see if there is a a linear increase or decrease in the amount of words recalled so we'll just leave that at the default and we don't know actually even if there is a significant difference yet or we wouldn't if we were analyzing the data for the first time so uh, we, we don't even know if we, we need to follow up anything from the from the main ANOVA analysis. So I click OK and we get some output. First table just tells us the levels of our independent variable. Uh, our second table gives us the, the means, uh, the descriptive uh, statistics, uh, the mean and standard deviation, uh, and the sample size. Uh, for each level of the independent variable. So we see that there is an increase in the means as we go from shallow to deep processing. Uh, now the next table will will give us what's called the multivariate um, test. So there's a multivariate approach to repeated measures, um, which is nice because it doesn't have the assumption of sphericity that the univariate test that most ANOVA textbooks cover has. So we um, we are going to, if we were to use this test, we would, would certainly reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a statistically significant difference between these means and is a rather large effect size. Uh, the next table is a test of that sphericity assumption. Now the sphericity assumption um, is basically that the different scores, the different scores between uh, the conditions um, are equal in the population. So the, the, the univariate the univariate test has that um, has that assumption, and so this table tells us that okay, we have a pretty low p-value 
uh, for this versity assumption test, which basically tests a null hypothesis that the that the different scores um, between the conditions are in fact equal. So we kind of have to conclude that they are not equal, right? So we might want to apply a correction. Two commonly used corrections are Greenhouse Geyser and Hunfeld. We either apply that correction because we violated this versity assumption, or we can ignore this versity assumption and report, at least for the overall test, the, the multivariate uh, test. Uh, so we can go to the next table, which gives the univariate um, tests of the repeated measures or within subjects factor, and we see that, okay, if we assume sphericity, which we probably shouldn't because we violated that assumption according to Mockley's test, uh, if we assume sphericity, then we're going to have a statistically significant effect. Uh, but even if we apply the correction to the degrees of freedom uh, that, that, the, that, the, that the test of sphericity implies that we should apply, uh, we still reach the same result and we say that there is in fact a statistically significant difference between these conditions with a fairly large effect size. So now we might want to look at, okay, what's the nature of this difference? So by default we got a contrast, a linear contrast, which uh, tests basically do the means increase linearly from or, or decrease could, it could test that as well, but, but we already see that, it, that they increase. Do the, do the means increase linearly from uh, shallow to medium to, to um, deep levels of processing? And in fact, that trend is statistically significant and fairly strong. Since there's three conditions, it will also test the quadratic trend, which is also surprisingly statistically significant. Uh, so we might want to actually look at a plot to see what's the nature of that quadratic trend because it is um, it is present in the data. So we'll ask for just a very simple plot of. of the means so we can get a hang on what the nature of the um, quadratic trend is. So all this output is the same as we had before. Uh, so it does kind of turn a bit so that's why the, the quadratic trend is significant because it, it, it does have a bit of a turn here uh, but generally speaking it looks like the, the levels of processing uh, increase linearly um, or, or I should say the recall increases linearly as depth of processing um, increases. Now we could do some pairwise comparisons between the means um, using a, a Bonferroni or SIDAC correction since we don't have a lot of means even though Bonferroni test is quite conservative we don't have a ton of means that we're comparing so it, it's not too awful a thing to do. So we go to uh, our ender options and we could say compare main effects which uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to call it that but, but we're actually comparing the, the conditions within the one independent variable and we click on uh, Bonferroni so it'll correct it'll correct um, type 1 error for the the, the, the few comparisons we're going to do and we see that we, there is not a statistically significant difference between um, one, which would be one is the shallow level of processing, two is medium. So it doesn't look like that's there at all. Even if we didn't apply the type one error correction, it looks like there's no difference between level one and two, which is shallow and medium, but there is in fact a fairly large difference between one and three, and also a uh, I, should say, I shouldn't say large. There is a statistically significant difference between 1 and 3, and there's also a statistically significant difference between 2 and 3. So we can conclude that um, shallow, that the deep level of processing led to significantly more words recalled than both the medium and the low levels of processing, but there was not a statistically significant difference between the low and medium levels of processing. We also have here the multivariate tests um, for that um, post hoc test that we just conducted. 
um, which which is nice because we did violate the um, violate the assumption of uh, of uh, sphericity, uh, but as 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 we saw that there was not a lot of impact of the violation of that assumption. So basically, that's um, how you conduct a repeated measures analysis of variance in SPSS. Uh, there is the added wrinkle of assessing the um, sphericity assumption. So if that's violated again, uh, you'll want to either report Mockley's uh, not Mockley's test. You'll want to report the multivariate test um, or a corrected version, either Greenhouse Geyser or Hunfeld, of the um, univariate test. You'll want you'll want to um, do one or the other of. Them.